Yes. Okay, thank you, Klaus. I'll start, um, we have to make it fast again. I'll start with the context of this. Um, we have a project running which is called the VedaWeb project. Uh, we started in 2017, it ran until 2021. And now we're in the second phase, so from 2022 to 2025, we have VedaWeb part two. You already mentioned there's um, many universities involved. We have like four universities actually, but the history of that is that uh, the four universities it all originated in Cologne, actually. So we have, for example, Patrick Saale sitting over there. He was in Cologne by that time when we started. Same with Uta Reinöl and same with Daniel Kölligan. But now we have like Wuppertal, Würzburg, Cologne and Freiburg at that point. And then we have uh, more important or most important, the people who do the actual work. Berger Kiss is one of them. And Berger and me, we are from Cologne, as he said. Like. Okay, what was the project about? Like the VedaWeb project, so not the part Berg is going to talk about, but the history of it. Uh, we started with a text which is called the Rig Veda, which is uh, somewhat the oldest old Indo-Aryan text. It dates back to like um, the mid second century BC, so it's more than 3,000 years old. And the interesting part is um, that it's kind of conservating an early stage of Vedic Sanskrit, and Vedic Sanskrit is uh, an Indo-Aryan language, so it's actually a linguistic platform or linguistic project and we had different types of resources. We had texts in different versions, like from the Rig Veda, different text versions and translations. Then we had morphological glossings from Zurich actually and um, we had references to uh, dictionaries which we host in Cologne and all this was uh, put together like um, revised and enriched and then put together in one platform and on the side um, published as raw data as well, so it exists in two points. So this is the platform, it's moving a bit. Um, the only thing which is important here is that we have uh, text in different versions and different translations, and we have a layered um, display of it. So you can choose the layers that you want to display, so they are all aligned actually, so you can um, see different translations to a certain part and then skip through the whole text. So this is the background now. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, we gotta be quick about this. Um, so what happened after we published this platform? We see here the daily visits of this platform during the first half year of it being online. Um, it's the research community working with the Rig Veda is relatively small, so um, daily visits of, I don't know, something between 15 and 30 uh, visits um, made us really happy. Um, also, we got feedback on this platform. It was general feedback, uh, requests to, to, for uh, additional features, and uh, mainly um, proposals for data corrections. So this may sound like critical feedback, but it actually shows us that the platform is used by people who are working with the data. So it's not just people who come visit to have a look, but they actually use this platform. So this is very positive. And um, all the proposed corrections we got were incorporated into our data by the linguists, uh, specialists uh, in our team then. So this, these corrections, they reached us via email or GitHub issues. We have our um, our data published in a GitHub repository as well as the application code base. Um, so, so this phenomena we call uh, blind collaboration. Uh, don't research on this term, we just made it up. Um, so it's, it's easy to understand. Users approach us to contribute to this platform, but they know nothing of each other and each other's uh, contributions which is bad, hence the sad smiley. Um, so now we are in our second uh, project phase, VedaWeb 2, and we are facing new challenges. Um, the two main ones being we want to work with additional texts, so we want to provide resources on a handful of additional texts um, which are of different structure. And this is a very, very, very big challenge. Um, but I don't want to talk about this here now because we're talking about collaboration. So I'm going to skip to the next one. 
um, we need platform features to enable and even encourage collaboration because obviously uh, there is uh, an impulse to contribute to, to this platform um, within the user base. Um, so what we are doing now is uh, we are developing a new software we call Text, T-E-K-S-T, -E which will be the technical basis for the new Vedava platform. Um, and yeah, while we are at it, uh, we also have it being, uh, being re usable by comparable projects. So if you're interested in it, you can um, follow the development of the software um, uh, via its GitHub repository. Um, so what are the requirements we see for this actual collaboration? Um, this is not a complete list, of course. Um, I mean, the impulse to contribute seems to be there already. So people are approaching us. Um, the thing is that the, it's important that this, the initial set of uh, resources should have a high quality to draw users. I mean, this whole thing should look like something that has potential uh, for people to be drawn to it. Um, so to even go a step further, um, the platform should aim to become like a go-to place for resources on a certain subject. Um, also, maybe contributing to a platform that is well established and that is a go-to place or the go-to place for resources on a subject uh, comes with a certain prestige. Maybe that, it's, that is a factor drawing people to. Um, so um, what we are trying to implement is uh, that we want to uh, want to move these active users who are willing to contribute to the data into a registered user base so they can, they can create an account or apply for an account. It's not like open registration. Um, so we can form like a small community of uh, scholars working with, uh, with the Rig Veda or the other texts we are providing. Um, and uh, they have the possibility to um, to create own data layers in this, uh, in this platform, so to publish their research data or even um, yeah, create new uh, data. And then they can evaluate or improve uh, the, the data layers uh, they, um, they propose for publishing there. And then we have the, the role of the operator. So there can be one or more operators on an instance of this platform uh, who yeah, function as, a, as curators, uh, and they decide uh, what, uh, what's, what's the set of uh, resources that is actually published to, the, um, to visitors who are not part of this uh, contributing group of people. Um, th this is just a very high level view on it, but uh, yeah, because of the time constraints. Um, there are some questions we have to ask ourselves. It's, a non-exhaustive list. Um, are scholars willing to contribute to each other's resources and to what extent um, is an obvious question. Then can and should platforms like this become like one-stop shops for research data on a certain subject? Or is it good that there is a like diver diverse landscape of uh, places where those resources can be located? Um, in our case, uh, the target uh, audience of our platform seems to enjoy the fact that this, there's like a place where all those resources are aggregated and accessible because they also can like, just browse the data, search it, and so on. Um, and those are mainly resources that uh, are not really easily av available uh, otherwise, maybe even only in printed books or something. Um, how much moderation will be needed is a very, very uh, important question. Uh, also, I'm not going to answer this now because, yeah. But maybe if you think it's important, you can ask um, this question later. Um, could this change the situation for under-resourced languages like Vedic Sanskrit? Um, so could, 
could the existence of a platform like this help making resources on uh, those languages um, more and e more easily accessible? Um, yeah. So, um, thank you for your t attention. Uh, you can here see some of our most important project resources if you want to look something up or visit our platform. You're welcome to do, that, do so.